Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are pianist Robert Thies and actor Roland Kicks Kickinger. <laughs> Kickinger. <laughs> New Jersey native Robert Edward Thies is a consummate musician. He gained worldwide attention in 1995 when he won the first prize, the gold medal, in the Russian competition in Moscow. The first American since Van Cliburn won in 1958. His work uh, doesn't stop there. He's played the piano all over the universe, Latvia, <laughs> Hungary, Mexico, New Zealand, Russia, I can go on and on, uh, and of course the United States where uh, he played where I saw him play with the California Philharmonic at Disney Hall with Maestro Victor Venner. Uh, does it matter who your maestro is when you're playing? It does, very much, yeah. How, does that, how do they control it? Well, I mean, the, every orchestra has its own conductor. So, uh, and every conductor has his own background of experience, and some conductors conduct in many different orchestras in different cities, so. I don't have any choosing of who my conductor is. I'm Does it make it easier or harder for you? With, with yeah, with the with the conductor. Well, are some easier than others? Absolutely. I mean, everyone has a different approach, and and conducting for some is more natural maybe than others. Everybody has their own challenges. When I saw you play, uh, the people in front of me. I mean, everybody was like a standing ovation, of course, and the people in front of me said. Did you see the fingers on that guy? <laughs> Did you see the fingers? Because we couldn't see the fingers. They move so fast. How do you keep, uh, keep them moving so fast? Well, I think I just have to take care of them. I don't do a whole lot of manual labor. I example. wondered how you took care of them. Yeah, I mean, I don't work in the fields. <laughs> <laughs> you don't dig the garden? It was funny. When I was a child, I used to, when I could, go outside and play basketball with my brothers and their friends, and my mom would come out and said, she would say, I, I don't care if you hit Rob in the face, but just watch his hands. <laughs> so she was watching from the beginning. Did you start at an early age? I started playing probably around three or four. I was sounding out music I heard from the television, and then she put me in lessons at age five. It, was your family musical? Uh, sort of. I mean, my father was an amateur musician. He didn't pursue it, but he, he played the saxophone and the wind instrument. So you would hear that at home? Yeah, and, and he sort of introduced me to jazz and, and playing, mm. you know, a different kind of music, too. So it opened my ears and taught me to play by ear. And, and the rest of your family, did they go on to be musical? Not really. They took lessons for a while, and for whatever reason, my mom let them stop. <laughs> so so you were the stop. chosen one, right? <laughs> but you, the talent must have come at three or four. Uh, yeah, I think I, I showed a knack for, for music, a love for music, very young. Did you, did you uh, hate practicing? There was a period around ages 11 to 13, 14 where it was difficult because, again, my friends were outside living normal lives, playing <coughs> sports, and I was trapped inside at this big black and, you know, black piano playing music of composers that died 200 years ago. It was a very serious discipline, and, and now those years were the most difficult. I think the discipline is just saying what you said it. I mean, you have to have discipline in anything, in dance, and any kind of musical instrument. Absolutely. But you always feel, or I, I guess you feel like you're giving up something for what you have to do. I think you're right. I think any art, like you just mentioned, dance, anything else, requires sacrifice. And in the end? Well, in the end, it's it's worth it. I mean, if you have a passion for something, go for it. But if you don't, then do something else. Yeah, because yeah. you must have had the passion, even even though it was difficult during those teen years mm -hmm. to get through. H how old were you when you played in Moscow? Well, actually, uh, I did play in Moscow in 1998. 
the competition that I won was the Prokofiev competition. Actually, it was in the rival city of St. Petersburg. Oh, it was in St. Petersburg. Yeah. Uh, so there's I this was rivalry wondering... between those two cities. And... <laughs> I was going to ask you, uh, what did you play? It was Prokofiev, right? It, it Would you the, have to play that? Yeah, it was the Prokofiev competition, so it's it focused on his music, but I played music of Beethoven, Debussy, oh. Scriabin, Brahms. I mean, I, the whole gamut, Rachmaninoff. How often do you play? I mean, do you play like day after day for this competition? How do they do it? Uh, well, there were th three, almost four rounds. In other words, there were two performances for the first round. So you'd do your first performance, and then when they got through all the other contestants, you'd do another one a few days later. And then, so there were a few days b gap between each one. The whole thing lasted two and a half weeks. The, oh, two and a half weeks. But yeah. how do you choose what to play, or do they tell you? They give you guidelines. They say, we want to hear something of this composer, or we want to hear oh. a sonata. You know, I got to choose any sonata Prokofiev or any concerto of Prokofiev. Oh, example. you did. Yeah. And, then did and then did you get to pick the other composers? Yes, or did you? for the most part. Like they said, they wanted a romantic work. So I could have played Chopin, oh, Brahms, Schumann, anything. I see. So, so that's the guy. There was some leeway, and so that was nice for the judges. They didn't hear uh, each pianist play the same repertoire. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. And how old were you? I was 24. Did you have a coach helping you and telling you what to do or how to do it? Or do you pick somebody up when you get to Russia? Or how do you do that? There's no coach. I mean, my, my final lessons were with my teacher back here in Los Angeles. And, oh, they were? You were taking it. here? Yeah, I went to school at USC and got a bachelor's and master's degree there. And then you went uh, to Russia alone? Yeah. Basically? Yeah. <laughs> um, when you played at Disney the other day, um, what did you play? I played the Rachmaninoff Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini. So it had that Rhapsody in blue overtone, undertone. What was it? it was what was the influence? I never thought of that. Oh, I saw the but influence. You're right. I mean, Gershwin wrote his Rhapsody in blue prior to that. I don't know if Rachmaninoff oh, he did. Uh, had he Rachmaninoff did hear Gershwin perform. In fact, Rachmaninoff was at the premiere of the Rhapsody Blue, so you you probably onto something there. I kept picking up that thing. It was beautiful. Was it? Is it a difficult piece? It's very difficult. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wondered if it was difficult because the people, as I say, were in awe when you finished, and you you made it seem easy, of course. Oh, thank but, you. Um, that's the trick. That's the, I was just going to say, that's the trick. Uh, how you had to go faster, slower. Uh, how did you train? How, who actually, when you get on stage, uh -huh. you have Victor Venner or mm -hmm. you have some other con conductor, Esapeka, mm -hmm. or whoever you have, how do you know how fast to go, how slow to go? Do they follow you or do you follow them? That's the joy of live performance. As much as you prepare <laughs> and rehearse, you, the, there's something about a live performance that uh, an element that you can never prepare for, or you have to prepare for anything. But during rehearsals, you must know what's happening. Right. Does it Usually, change? the soloist gets together with the conductor and they talk about the tempi of the piece. And the difficulty of this piece is that the tempi were changing from variation to variation. So, uh, but in performance, you know, the conductor might decide to do something slower or faster, and I have to adjust because I'm competing with 90-piece orchestra. <laughs> so usually, in that case, the soloist has to adjust to the orchestra because we can try to fight them, but they're bigger than I am. <laughs> that's, another, that's another thing, talking about competing. How loud does the orchestra have to be so that they don't drown you out? Or uh, how, how is that that's controlled? A, that's a tricky thing. And a conductor, that's one of the conductor's biggest responsibilities, is to figure out how to balance the two forces together. Um, fortunately, the composers are skilled enough that they think about this element too, and they usually write their dynamics accordingly. So. Oh, so they know. Oh, because, yeah. I mean, I've been to a few performances where is that the piano or is that the violinist playing? And, mm. and all of a sudden they feel like they've been drowned out. Um, we talked about your hands. Mm -hmm. Do you do any other kind of protection? You know, it's just being aware of uh, what I do physically. Like, I. It's not just the hands, it's the arms. And do I you think exercise? I, I do work out <laughs> from time to time. Uh, yeah, to try to keep the arms strong So I, because it's too easy to be, injure yourself. Otherwise, if you don't have some strength. And again, it's the arms that take the brunt of piano playing. This part. Yeah. From the time you were in St. Petersburg uh, to now, 
is your work gotten faster or slower or can you see any kind of change actually physically playing? physically <laughs> I think overall I think you talk to most people and they say as they age things get slower yeah, that's why I'm asking if, if you listen to like Leonard Bernstein's performances as he aged or many pianists performances they tend to get slower or conductors performances they get slower as they age but I think I don't well, know what the reason is Conductors get slower? Uh, Tempe gets slower, slower yeah. later in their, so. And then what about you? I, I don't <laughs> think I have that luxury yet. <laughs> Maybe in 40 <laughs> years we'll talk about it. <laughs> um, sitting in the audience, would we know if you missed a note? I couldn't tell if you were missing a note. Would the conductor know? Who knows? I think Do you make a grimace on your <laughs> No, you try to avoid that because as you said earlier, I try to make it look easy. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, actually when I'm up there, I'm consciously telling myself to stay calm and relax. And Do you talk to yourself? Well, not to the point where I'll need, you know, psychotherapy. No, but it. I mean, <laughs> I, I wondered if you were counting. I saw your lips move once. Yeah, I mean, you try to get completely immersed in the music. And uh, certainly, I miss notes here and there. It's it's very human to do so. And <laughs> the orchestra missed plenty of notes. That's what I wondered. But that's the human element. And it, that individual notes aren't so important. It's the overall musical message that matters. Do you practice daily? I should be. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, I'm not gonna go there. Is it easier to play with an orchestra or without? Uh, easier. Well, I guess you could argue that it's easier to play just solo because you don't have that extra um, um, element to um. deal with. But playing with an orchestra is one of the most enjoyable experiences. This um, CD, tell us a little bit about it. It's a live recording. Uh, I've sort of avoided doing studio recordings because most recordings out there have so many edits in in each performance that it doesn't really capture a, a real performance to me and so this was a performance I did in Arizona years ago and it uh, again there are no edits it's a live performance you hear <gasps> some of the applause Beethoven and, yeah so there's Beethoven, Debussy, Rachmaninoff, uh, Brahms, uh, Kachaturian so this was a concert that you gave and they just recorded live? It was live. recorded and I decided this was a nice representation of a live performance. And Kachaturian, what'd you play? Well, he wrote a Toccata that's... Uh, uh, Beautiful. The Toccata, you, you, you might enjoy that. It's one of those fast sort of bravura pieces. It's we went to his house in Yerevan oh, in really? Armenia. Yeah, it was pretty fabulous. Like wow. They have a house museum uh -huh. with his work there. When you're not working, you teach, I think, or uh, you've taught. I do a little bit of teaching, but uh, and I enjoy it, especially you know people far along in their training, like college level. I enjoy that very much, and I do master classes for for students. But generally, my focus is on, on playing and, and preparing. And, yeah. Um, have you worked with singers? I have. How does yeah. that work? Because you're like the star and then the singer has to be the star too. It's I mean, a very interesting <laughs> question because it is a different dynamic and generally an audience member when they see a singer and pianist on stage they view the singer as the, the soloist exactly and the pianist as the accompanist right and you know pianists deal with that in different ways because it like like what you're talking about I'm the superstar when I play a concerto with orchestra or when I do a solo recital suddenly when I'm playing with a violinist or a singer, oh, right. the audience, even if the music was written for piano, piano and violin, like every single sonata by Brahms, Beethoven, Mozart, they wrote them as sonatas for piano and violin. Piano so they're and together. Cello. I mean, so they're, they're level, equals. equal. They're equals. Yeah. And in, in playing with singers, many composers wrote song literature, and uh -huh. that was music for song and, or for voice and piano. So you are equals. If I was playing only arias for the singer, then you might call I me see. an accompanist. I yeah. see. Well, I'm so glad you came today. Yeah. It was really a thrill to have you, and thank Pleasure. you. Thank you very much for having me. And thanks for watching our fantastic pianist. And we'll be right back with actor Roland Kickinger. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm here with actor, bodybuilding champion, Roland Kickinger. 
Roland was born and raised in Austria, won the title of Mr. Universe in 1995, graduated from hotel and management school, and after a few years on the cruise ship circuit, he came to California to follow his dream. One other thing you, you have done is you're a, an accredited chef, this credentialed correct. chef, so you know how to feed us, bodybuild us, teach us <laughs> acting. What else do you do, Roland? Well, as a, hi, Joanne, number one. First of all, um, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, and I want, wanted to mention being a chef is really helpful, but in school, in the cooking show, the culinary school in Vienna, you learn how you're not supposed to eat. That's good. Everything is tasty and full of creams and full of spices, oh, and full oh. of sugar, pastries, everything you can imagine. So what, I, what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm taking all these recipes, what I have in my head, and I turn them around and make them healthy. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. And you can do a book. Everything, yes. Oh, that's fantastic. And you, when you go on and have your own TV show, <laughs> when they do this yes. reality show with Roland, we can learn everything. Did you actually come to California to be an actor? Uh, first of all, I believe my sport brought me over here, bodybuilding. Did it? And I knew I had to be at the place where everything is happening. Mm. And in California, Venice Beach, Santa Monica, I mean, everything is happening here in the athletic world, in, in the world of bodybuilding. So you came with that in mind. This Were you my, thinking of acting? This was all? my initial motivation to come here, but you know, I always say as a bodybuilder, you're somewhat of an, of an actor already, because you're an entertainer. I watched those pictures of you in your competition, and everything was like choreographed really slowly, where moving, it was like yes. a constant moving like a ballet, rather than how some of the poses are sharp, move like yes. that. And it was beautiful. The background was yeah. black. It is choreographed. You know, Did you do it? Yes, I do, uh, mostly. I had actually also help with that. But you know, it, it is like choreographed, like ballet. The only thing is we don't wear tights, at least not on the stage. Right. <laughs> but did you ever take dance classes? Yes, I do took uh, ballet classes, actually, oh, because yeah. I'm, I'm from, from Vienna originally. And my mom, she told me, you go to ballet, ballet and piano and dancing the waltz. Those are the three things you got to do when you're a child. Oh, she did. So she did make you do those things, but yes. you could see that when you're competition. And I think those little extra edges are what help you to win. Yeah, I believe so, because it, 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 it has to look fluently, you know, when you're on stage. Exactly, that's it should, what it was. It should be like a really beautiful, uh, beautiful on your eye. It should not look like a, like a fast, quick routine. It, it should flow like water, basically. It was, it was beautiful. Thank but you. Uh, when you came to California, you came as a bodybuilder. Then you began uh, to act. Were you compared to our governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, when you first came? I, I believe people did, did compare me uh, in a certain way, yes. Because you think the accent or coming from Austria I, or I the think, whole thing? I think my good looks. <laughs> that's I what think it was. that's what it was. <laughs> Were you the same size as he is? Uh, You're 6'5". Six I'm 6'5", six yes. And when you were bodybuilding, what did you weigh? I, I weighed about, you know, somewhere between 290 and 320 pounds oh, in did. that neighborhood. But uh, the thing with, with um, Mr. Schwarzenegger, if he's not training all the time, your body changes and it's not as attractive. So do you train all the time? Um, I train all the time and what, as far as I know, um, Arnold, our governor, our governor, is still training every day and he's actually in, in really good shape. I've seen him lately and he has a six pack Does and it? he looks but, really good. But is, is that, if you lose weight then, if you stop training, like yes. you train really strenuously, if mm -hmm. you stop training, then do you soften up? Uh, that really depends. Uh, usually uh, the muscles do get a little bit softer, but you're still gonna look amazing. I mean, I've known, I've known a gentleman who is in his 70s and he's trained his whole life. And he stopped when he was like 74 and, and he still looks amazing. So he still looks good. Yes. Um, and I hate to keep talking about Arnold, we're not gonna talk about him anymore, but you did play the role of C. Arnold Run. Yes. How did you get that? <laughs> I portrayed his life story. Uh, um, I was called in for a, for a read and um, I read and um, you know I, I had a feel, I, I, I knew what they were looking for so and um, you know it was it was a privilege and honor to really you know portray 
your, your motivator and, and, and mentor. Had you taken acting lessons? Yes. I've Where started, were you taking acting lessons? I've then? taken acting classes with Milton Gazzellas from the oh, Bella, Beverly oh, Hills Playhouse. Milton is for the For many best. years. I started with, with a theater background. I, I did theater for the Mark Taper Forum. And oh, you um, did. this was really my base, you know, for I think about four years I did theater. We talked about being a chef, but when you come to be an actor, yeah. usually actors are waiters. They're never chefs. Did you have to work? Did you work as a chef while you were trying to get <laughs> acting jobs? Uh, I never worked as a chef, actually, because I wasn't heat resistant. <laughs> it's just way too hot for me is next it? to the ovens. <laughs> next that to was the, the first thing you said to me. Isn't it too hot in it's here? It's just too hot. No, I can't stand the kitchen. Anyway, I cook for myself. <laughs> but, um, no, I, I, I was always lucky and, and happy to combine my fitness and, and health lifestyle with acting. Actually, it works pretty good. And So you were lucky you could train people while you still had yeah, acting? Yeah, I, I would help people getting in their physical conditions and also mm -hmm. uh, I would work with, with Joe Weider as well. He's great, you know, he, yeah. He's the, the icon in bodybuilding. Right. And, uh, I worked for over 10 years for the company and with Joe closely together. And then you got you got a role in Lethal Weapon and Terminator Salvation. What was it? Salvation. <laughs> what did you do in those? Were you playing? Well, it started actually off with commercial work, and I've heard that you worked with Andy Warhol. I did. And my first film was a short film called Fifteen Minutes of Fame. Oh, was that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were <laughs> stealing his. <laughs> he was Yeah, it was Eddie, and we had a Andy Warhol uh, actor there, and he was just like. He looked like Andy. <laughs> very, All you have you know, to do is put a wig on. Yeah, wig and tiny <laughs> little, white. yeah, very white. It was incredible. So oh, that was these great. are the beginning years, yes. So you started in commercials. Yes. And then you, you then you had a lot of TV credits. You did a lot of TV shows. Correct. Yeah. What kind of roles? Uh, different types. Yeah. Somewhere. What are the different types? <laughs> you, because. Um, you know, somebody will look at you and say, this is the one way yes. we have to cast him. You know, there's a one way, but I always felt like, okay, why can't the tall and little bit larger guy not play a lawyer? Why can't he, why can't be, he be a dad? Why can't be a, an, an officer? I mean, police officer more likely. Anything, but, right. But you can do anything, even, even if you're a little bit taller and larger at this point of time. And, <laughs> and with clothes, as you can see, I look very little right now. You yeah, know, you do look I, very I feel, little. I we were tiny. worried you wouldn't fit in the chair. I know. <laughs> but you did fit fine. I did. I did. But, but um, do you go up against the same people when you're out to cast, when you go to a call? At, at one, once in a while, I'll meet the same uh, young actors, yeah. When you, when you were on the cruise ship, you worked every part of a cruise ship until I, uh, I think you said, I'm sick of this. What did you do and, and was it helpful now in your well, career? The way that started the cruise ship work, start, I, I saw the love boat. Oh, that's what it was, I it's a love, the love boat. boat. And I said to myself, <laughs> this is exactly what I want to do. You, wor you basically don't work. You just entertain the people and you have a fun time. You joke <laughs> around, you know, and you, you just put a smile on everybody's faces. But then I got there. And th there was nothing like the, the love boat. It wasn't the love boat. It was the nightmare <laughs> boat. It was horrible. I mean, it was work from 6 in the morning to 3 in the morning. Constant eating, eating, eating. Midnight buffet. We got to bed at 2, 3 in the morning. Because you had to work all those. It's, it's work. It's, I started as a boss boy, then a waiter, then I was a sister maitre d', and then I... Then I checked out. And then you checked out. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> is that when you came to California? Yeah, after that, I, I mean, I, the, the base was in Miami, in Florida. Oh, and, it was um, in Florida. And I, back then, I, I said to myself, I love America. I love that. I love the ocean. I love the big white cars, you know, the, the roads. <laughs> and, and I love everything what, what's available in America. And, uh, and, and after the cruise ship, I, I went back home to Austria. But, but then finally, after a few more months, I, I made America my new home. You speak four languages. A little bit. A little bit. Could you act in those languages? A little bit of English, uh, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I, with accent, yeah, I'm, I'm could sure you? I, I could. Could you? Because uh, you I'm, wondering if, <laughs> I'm wondering if that gives you an edge when you go in for a role. Well, every now and then uh, I go as a, as a Russia, which works really good. Oh, that's as a very fantastic. East European accent. I mean, it works really good with an Austrian accent mixed up. So that that is an advantage or it not. It is helpful. I mean, there are a lot of American actors who have an accent. They, they, can, do, they can do an Austrian accent better than I do. I see, better than yeah. you speak. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you do any stage work? Stage? Uh, every now and then, yes. I, do you, I, do I you like back it? I enjoy it because it, it really is the, the foundation of acting. 
and uh, I just love the, the live audience and I, I like that oh, one take too. scenario and I like that pressure and I like that jumping in the cold water and I love to <laughs> the uh, audience learn all these, uh, these chunks of dialogues, you know, it's very challenging, I love it. When, when you're not working, do you continue to, to uh, work out at the gym? I, I do a lot of martial arts right now. I do a resistance training at the gym, martial arts, I do different weapons. Is that different? Than what, is that different than what you do? What, what you're used to? Yes. Your it, routine? It is very different because in martial arts everything is fast and it's, it, you have to loosen up in martial arts. You, everything comes out of your hips. Now in, in bodybuilding everything is kind of stiff and oh, contracted sure. and you know very slow and it, it's, it's not as fluent as martial art. Does, do you think that helps you more in acting? I believe so because I, I do my own stunts. I was uh, just oh, oh. in India a few months ago doing an action film there in the did, jungle in Chennai in the you South Ch India. In the, the Raven? No, this, oh, was, this was shot film? here. This was shot here in, in, in uh, Santa Barbara, actually. The Raven. Is Raven, it? the vampire film. But before, there was a film called Perrin May. Perrin May, the mighty man. Uh -huh. And um, oh, so you the, had to do all the that? concept, if you will, compare it to someone. It's kind of like a uh, like commando film in the jungle, uh -huh. you know, with a lot of different weapons. as a war scene. So that like martial arts helps? Incredibly, yes. Before we leave, um, I know you do a lot of community work. You go to schools, yes. you help with children, which I think is very admirable because you are a great uh, person for them to look up to and see what they can do. Where, what do you tell the children? I came with $400. I was living in a car. Uh, somehow I had to find, you know, make the ends meet. And, and, and I, I wanted to tell them that anything is really possible. And you have to have a passion for something, a dream, and don't think about anything else. Just follow your passion and dream. Well, the thing is, you did follow it. Your father didn't want you to be a bodybuilder or to do those things, did he? Yeah, he wanted me to be a soccer player. Oh, oh <laughs> he did? They make more money. Oh, he was right. And now I'm thinking back, he was actually right. <laughs> he they was do right. make more money. <laughs> Yeah, well, do. that was a good point he had, wasn't it? A very good point. Very, very fatherly. I mean, he, he was a dad, you know, who worked, he, he provided, you know, for us. And, oh, and his thought was, you know, this, this kid needs to make money. I mean, he needs to provide. And he's got this. a body that can do it. Yes, he can do it. He can work for three of us, you know. Yeah, but could you run that fast to play soccer? No, that's why I never played soccer. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, yes. I think we're going to thank you very much oh, for you're being welcome, with us. John. Thank, Thank you. you, Roland, so much for coming today. And thanks for watching the Joan Quinn Profiles. <laughs> uh, keep writing to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles, 90019. But I will answer your emails, jaquinn1 at aol.com. And look at that. Are you going to flex for us, Roland? I, you want to see it? No, you can't get up because we won't oh. be able to get it. But let's yes. see that. Yes, Joanne, I'll flex for you. Thank see? you. This Thank is for you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>